channel. I'm Sharp Real Wife. Welcome back to the Bride of Christ series, part four. So today's title or subtitle of this series is Jesus, our Kinsman Redeemer. So first I would like to start with prayer. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for this study, God. I thank you for each and every woman tuning in, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that we you truly continue to shower us with your presence, your love, and all of our brokenness, all of our issues, Lord. Help us to lay them at your feet. Have your way in this study, Lord God. Use me like never before, Lord God, and touch each and every woman exactly where they are. Touch our hearts, Lord. Truly show us how awesome it is to be the bride of Christ and this great thing, this great mystery that we have in you. In your mighty name I pray, amen. All right, so we're going to jump in. So, Jesus, our kinsman redeemer. So, let's just define what kinsman redeemer is. It's one who restores, who claims, who protects, who redeems us. Uh, maybe redeems or reclaims family property that have been lost or stolen or about to be lost. And so, we've all dealt with losses in our life, whether loss of a family member, whether loss of a job, maybe our health, we're struggling. Maybe, you know, we have regrets. Maybe, you know, we feel like some of our self-worth or value or identity was stolen when we were in a relationship. Or maybe we feel like uh, some of our self-respects, whatever it might be, we've all dealt with traumas, hurt with pain and some of us live in regret some of us live in our past some of us live stuck in those things not recognizing that there is a redeemer and there is one who could go to the deepest depths of whatever situation however hard that thing was however deep that pain was there's someone who loves us desperately and who's willing to go and to correct all of the wrongs who's willing to restore refresh us and to give us new life to heal us from those past hurts and the brokenness and all the things that we have dealt with there is someone who can do that who can redeem all the time that you feel you lost all the things that you think that were lost or the things that were stolen from you there is someone jesus christ who can restore our lives to the point where we can even forget those things that we suffered where we realize that our lives are blessed and that we don't live in past pains and regrets or past relationships and so this is what jesus being our kinsman redeemer is and a lot of us were very familiar um, if you grew up in church or if you're in church now you're very familiar with Boaz the story of Ruth and Boaz and in that story he was her kinsman redeemer so if you know the story you understand and if not I'll just kind of highlight back over it is that Ruth she was a Moabite woman and she was the daughter-in-law of Naomi and she also had a, another daughter-in-law Naomi did named Oprah and Naomi's husband died and her sons died, which were the husbands of those two young women. And when they died, Naomi told her daughter-in-laws, you know, leave me, go back to the house of your father and your mother, your kinsmen, because I don't have any more children to, to bear for you. I don't have any more sons so that you can have a seed because they did not have children at the time. And she says, leave me. You know, I give you my blessing. There will be no curse upon you. I give you my blessing. You can leave me. There will be no hard feelings. Go back to your family and seek a husband for yourselves so that you can have a seed because you know back in in those ancient days if if you didn't have children if you didn't have a seed especially a son you were looked upon as cursed you were looked upon as man what a terrible fate for that person how sad and she didn't want that for her daughter-in-law so she said go leave me um go find yourself a husband so that you can be blessed so you can be fruitful so that you can multiply and I want to go over the story because there's a lot of points that I want to highlight for us um, as single women. Because as single women, I feel like a lot of times we're like, you know what? I need a man. I'm single. I need someone to help provide for me, take care of me, to protect me. You know, I need so a, you know a, a partner in life. And the thing about it is that's a great thing. If you desire marriage, you know, I'm, I believe that in due time, God will send that man of God that, you know, he has for you. But in the meantime, you have to know that Jesus, that God is your husband as we've been talking about in this series and also remember that he is your provider he's your protector he's the lover of your soul he's the one that can restore everything because honestly even when if we get married our husband they can't do everything for us they can't restore all our brokenness our our past hurts and pains and they can't be our ultimate provider and protector and to give us all the wisdom that we need for this life they can't do it of course they can love us and to be our partner in life and to pray for us and to help us and to uphold us and lift us up and encourage us when we're sad or lonely or depressed but ultimately God is the one with all of the answers so I would like to go to the story 
of Ruth and Boaz because I joke all the time in my blogs about you know what you gotta trust God to, to send your Boaz or you're gonna end up with Bozo and I laugh about that all the time because a lot of times we're desperate for that human that man to come into our lives to to right all of our wrongs to heal all of our issues to help us and to make us happy but again as we know only God can do that we have to know how to be happy and whole within ourselves so let's go to the book of Ruth and I'm going to kind of just give you an overview of what's going on in this time. What's really going on? So, um, in this time, there was a great famine in the land. And it's also a light of spiritual faithfulness in a period of great, you know, hardships and destruction. And that's also what the story is, highlights. Um, faithfulness and trust in God, even when, you know, destruction comes knocking at your door. Um, when the trials and tribulation of life try to tear you apart, rip you apart, how one can still be faithful and how God can truly still deliver you out of that situation when he finds that you are faithful. And it also is a story of love. Um, and we're going to get into that. So um, let's just go straight into it. So I am going to go to the book of Ruth and I am going to go to chapter one, verse one. I am reading in the King James Version. So now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn into the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malan and Shilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. But then Malam and Shilion died, also of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So again, as I said, uh, Naomi's husband and her two sons died. Then she arose with her daughter-in-laws and said that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and giving them bread. So there was no famine in Moab at the time. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was and her daughters-in-law with her, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-laws, Go, return to your mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto your people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? And so she goes on to continue to plead with them to leave her. Don't stay with me. I don't have any more seeds. I don't have any more sons to, to bear you a husband. And she even goes down to say, and even if I found a husband and had children, are you going to wait with me until I have more sons, until they grow up? No, go on and find your husband. And so she's given them her blessing, as I said. But here is one thing that's very admirable, that Ruth, her one daughter-in-law, she stayed with her. Oprah, she went. She listened to her instructions. She left. She didn't. And it says, and she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone. This is Naomi talking. Back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. In other words, leave me. Go back to your family. And Ruth said, please entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, and I'm going to just say it in our translation, where you go, I'm going to go. Uh, where you live, I'm going to live. Your people are going to be my people. Your God are going to be my God. Where you die, I'm going to die. Where you'll be buried, I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more, but I won't part from you until death. And she was right or not. She's like, you know what? I understand. We have been hit with destruction. We have been hit with famine. You know, we have no men. I have no sons. I can't bear a seed, but you know what? I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to trust in the God that we serve. I'm not going to go back to my old gods. I'm not going to go back to my old habits. I'm not going to go back to my old ways. And I want to pose a question to you. When destruction hits your life, when sorrows, when pain, when a test, when a trial, when you're shocked by an event, do you run back to your old habits, to your old ways, to your old sins, to that old boyfriend that's there's a dead end where you know it's a demonic soul tie or he's just causing you to sin against God, but that's what you're used to. That's what's common to you. Do you go back to that person? Because man, God didn't answer my prayer or man, I'm struggling or man, you know what? 
God just hit me with a test or trial or something devastating just happened to me and I don't know what to do. Go to God. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Go to the source of all things, the source of all knowledge, all solution, all wisdom, all power, all strength, all comfort. He will comfort you. But a lot of times when situations happen in our lives, we go back to our old sin or that old relationship or that old person or back to our old ways or serving our old gods or putting ourselves back on a pedestal when God says no. I'm still here for you. I'm allowing this test and trial to strengthen you and to test your faith in me. But you have to allow me to work in your life. Come back to me. Don't run back to that old guy. Don't run back to those old habits, those old addictions. Run to the throne of grace. Run to my feet because I'm the only one that can heal you and give you direction for your life. And so that's just speaking to us out of even these scriptures right now. And then let's talk about Naomi. She meant well. She loved her sister, her daughter-in-laws. She wanted them, you know, she wanted to see them fruitful and multiply. She wanted to see their lives blessed. She wanted to see them married again. But you have to know that even when people who mean well around you tell you to do something, if God tells you otherwise, you can't listen to those people. It might be your mom. It might be your grandma. It might be your best friend. It might be your sister. And God knows we love those people. But when it comes to direction for our lives, we can listen to wise counsel, but make sure God's word and his counsel was first. Because honestly, Naomi meant well, as I said, but she was speaking doubt and fear. She was telling them like, you know what? I don't know how we're going to get out of this situation. Is a dead end here. I don't see any, you know, solution to this issue. I don't see any deliverance. So leave because there is no deliverance in this situation. And Satan be a liar. There is always a way out. If God be for you, who could be against you? First and foremost, seek God for instruction. So again, if God tells you something or gives you instructions, you can't listen to someone else because they can be pushing you away from your blessings because they don't understand the path that God has you on because they don't have the spiritual discernment in that moment to understand that God is moving in this situation. But oh, thank God that Ruth knew that God was moving in the situation. He had, she had faith enough to stand and say, I'm not leaving. I'm going to stand with you to the end. And I'm going to trust that our God's going to deliver us. So let's go on. Uh, when Naomi saw that she was steadfasted, minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they went until Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, is, is this Naomi? And she said unto them, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Wow, that says a lot. So when she came back, the people said, hey, is that Naomi? She said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. And the sad thing about that is Mara means bitter. And I want to go to my notes about her name. Because do you forget your name? Do you forget who God called you to be? Do you forget the purposes and plans and prophecies that God has set over your life when trouble comes? Because that's exactly what she did. She said, don't, don't call me Naomi. And Naomi means pleasantness. She said, don't call me that. She said, call me Mara, which means bitterness. And that is so sad that in that moment, God was wonder, wanting her to stand up and trust that he knew exactly what he was going to do with her. But instead, no, she did not choose that. Instead, she chose to be bitter. Are you bitter? Is, has there something transpired in your life that now you're angry with God? You're angry with yourself. You're angry with others around you. You're so bitter to the core. You forgot whose God called you to be. You forgot the promises of God. You forgot that God is faithful. And you forgot that nothing that comes against us is... is a surprise to God, the Almighty who knows everything. Nothing is a surprise to him. So we have to stop counting him out when destruction tries to come our way. It's just a test. It can't stand. It can't stay. If you trust and stand on God's word, speak his promises over your life, go to the throne, go to his feet, lay at his feet and say, God, I'm struggling with this. But God, I know you're faithful. Naomi forgot who she was. And God saying, have you forgotten who you are, my daughter, because you don't have a husband or because destruction has come your way or because I haven't moved fast enough on your behalf so you think that I have forgotten you completely? The devil is a lie. God has not forgotten you. He loves you. He can't forget you because it's not in his nature. 
And I say it in time and time again, and I'll repeat this over and over again. We have to remember Jeremiah 29 and 11, that God has great plans for us. He didn't forget those plans because Satan attacks you. He didn't forget those plans because that man left you. He didn't forget those plans because you're lonely in your singleness. He didn't forget those plans because you didn't achieve that goal. He didn't forget those plans because you sinned against him. You made a mistake. You failed. He didn't forget those plans because people lied and cheated on you and did all kind of crazy things against you. He didn't forget those plans because you live in regret. He didn't forget those plans because of your past. He loves you. And I will always say, nothing can separate us from the love of God. It tells us in his word. So remember who you are, woman of God. Remember who you are more than a conqueror. Remember who you are, warrior princess. Nothing can stand against you because you have God and all of heaven backing you up. So if you feel like you are in a situation that's bigger than you, thank God, because this is an opportunity for you to see the miracles and the hand of God move in your life. He wants to move on your behalf, but he's waiting for our faith. He's waiting for us to trust in him in spite of what's going on around us, in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our flaws to say, God, I know that you are a mighty God who reigns and you reign forevermore and you can move in this situation that seems like there is no way out. You can move and I won't become bitter. I won't forget who you've called me to be because of famine in the land or because of destruction because I know that you are a God of the impossible so let's go back to this do you speak like that like Naomi when testing trials come or do you speak words of faith we all can get off it's very easy but check yourself check yourself and say God help me that when stuff happens or when things come my way even frustrations or situations that might make me fear or to, to be scared or anxious about it help my first reaction not to be panic because we can all be guilty of it help me not to panic but in that moment help me to catch myself and say you know what God I give this to you right in that moment you know what God I know that you knew this was gonna happen I laid at your feet God I'm nervous I'm scared a anxiety is gonna try to plague me but you know what I speak against anxiety I speak peace over my mind I speak peace over the spirit I speak peace in my heart because you oh God can give me the peace that surpasses all understanding and in every situation you are still God and you still reign and you're still on the throne of my life so again we have to have a dogmatic stand to follow after God no matter what happens. And Ruth had a dogmatic stand to stand and wait to see the salvation of the Lord. And thank God that she did. Because in that, she so happened to come into her natural kinsman redeemer, which was Boaz. And because of the law of Moses, it was law that the poor could wait around uh, when they were harvesting and when they were setting everything in motion in seed time and harvest, they could wait and they could reap whatever was left over, the barley or the food, and they could take it back. But you know what? Ruth, she found favor in Boaz's eyes. And he told the workers of the field, you know what? Leave her be, let her alone, let her to get as much as she wants. And they even left extra for her. And God will let you find favor. When your ways please God, she was faithful. God said, you know what? I can trust her. I'm going to favor her. I'm going to bless her life. She found favor in God's eyes and God caused her to find favor in Boaz's eyes. And also when you're faithful and you stand in that set place, even when it's shaky, even when it doesn't make sense, but you trust God, he will put you in the right place at the right time. She had no idea that Boaz was her kinsman redeemer. She had no idea that down the line he was a relative that could redeem her situation that could redeem lost property that had been lost when her husband died that could redeem her name that could marry her and that could bear her children she had no idea who he was but god set her in the right place at the right time and she listened to naomi naomi gave her words of wisdom how to present herself before boaz and that's what i want to find now in the word of god how it all went down okay we're gonna look for that and so let's read ruth 3 verse 1 then naomi her mother-in-law said unto her my daughter shall i not seek rest for thee that it may be well with thee and now is not boaz of our kindred with whose maidens thou was behold he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor so wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment, your clothing, she means, upon you. Put your clothing on, and she's saying, and get thee down to the floor, but make thy not self known unto man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. So I'm just going to translate, and she's instructing her. And what she's instructing her is how to redeem her kinsman redeemer. And so Boaz invited her to dinner. I'm going to read some of my notes. And he showed her favor. He delighted in her. And so God will provide an overflow 
and safety to those who show loyalty to him. And that's what he was doing. Ruth wanted God's heart, not his hand. She knew that serving God, she might not get another husband. She might have to live in poverty. But you know what? She wanted God. And so she stayed. Again, she stayed with her mother-in-law. But he was able to put her in the right place at the right time, as I said earlier. So Naomi instructs Ruth. And here's what she tells her to do. She is speaking according to the social custom in that time where a widow could initiate proceedings to a relative to serve as her kinsman redeemer. And her request is that Boaz spreads his skirt over her. And that's a symbolic pledge of marriage. And this is in ancient times. And so it's a well-known custom in the ancient Near East. And so this is what she tells her to do. You know, she tells her to get dressed all up in your finest clothing, spray yourself, smell nice, wait until he's happy, till Boaz has eaten and drinking and had a good time. And then do as I have told you. And so Ruth is obedient and she does this. And in this, because it is custom and he knows exactly what she is doing, he responds. It delights him to respond. And so, again, he goes through all the proceedings to uh, make sure that there's no other kinsman redeemer who is closer, who can actually redeem her before him. And he does this. And there is one man, but as he meets with this guy, he basically lets him know, also, you're going to have to redeem the property and, you know, upkeep these things. And so the, the man declines. And so Boaz, Boaz redeems Ruth as his wife. And he restores and reclaims the property that was lost when her husband died. So this is what it means to be her kinsman redeemer. And so, again, she was at the right place at the right time because she obeyed God. And how many times do we miss out on God's blessings because we're just not in the right place at the right time? Because we're letting our emotions, our heart lead us, other people's opinions, not the Holy Spirit, not allowing God to lead us. Because we can't try to figure out our path out based on natural ability natural wisdom and understanding his ways are higher than our ways god doesn't think like we think he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise in other words to confuse us like how did that happen because he wants to get the glory he doesn't want us to be able to figure it out without his help and so how many times have you missed out on god's blessings for your life because you just aren't listening to the holy spirit you're not listening to god you're in the wrong place at the right time because you're trying to make sense of it all but what i do want to tell you don't go Looking around for a husband, talking about, are you my kinsman redeemer? Are you my kinsman redeemer? Are you my kinsman redeemer? And flirting and getting all dressed up sexy and trying to, you know, flirt with them to get their attention. No, no, no. That's not what it is. Again, this was their customs of ancient Near East. This is not you try to look out and find a man. No, 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 no. Let the man find you. Of course, present yourself nice. Look good. Smell good. Be a woman of virtue, godliness. But don't go looking for a man. We know the word tells us that it's he who finds a good thing, not the other way around. So God will open that man's eyes to see you. Believe that, okay? Believe that. You don't have to go around talking about lay your coat over me <laughs> like, Ruth, like Ruth did. Like, those were ancient customs. Don't do that. <laughs> Please be careful, all right? Flirting with sin, don't do it. Uh, allow God to lead the man to you and allow God to, to lead you, okay? So that's just a little sidebar because I know a lot of people read the story and they're like, well, Naomi told Ruth to, you know, get all sexy and get all dressed up and go look for that man. Get that man. No, no, no that's not exactly how it went down. So just have wisdom. All right. Okay. And so one thing that I want to point out about this story is that Ruth, as I said earlier, was a Moabitess. She was a Moabite woman. And something that's great about this story is that Ruth and Boaz got married. And from the lineage of that union, from that great love story comes King David, comes Jesus Christ. And I want to really talk about what it is to be a Moabite. Um, they were the enemies of God. They were the enemies of Israel. And is the Israelites were the children of God. Um, those were the children, the people that he called to be his own. And so Moab means the founder of the Moabites, son of Lot, but by incest. Uh, the Balak king of Moabites, he hired Balaam to curse Israel. They were not friends of Israel, and Israel were God's chosen people. Eglon, the Moab king, he oppressed Israel in the period of the judges. So he was oppressing God's people. They didn't like God's people. They weren't allies with them. They were enemies. And Ruth, again, as I said, she was a Moabite woman, but the ancestor of King David and Christ himself. She was an enemy of the Israelites, her people. But yet, God used her to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. That should speak to your heart. That should speak volumes to you that God loves 
everyone. He wants everyone to come to know Jesus Christ. He wants everyone to come to know his love. He doesn't care about your past. He doesn't care about what you've done. He will use you to do some of the greatest things, to accomplish some of the greatest things in this world. But you have to believe it. You have to know that you serve that kind of God that will forgive you. So if devastation has hit you, regrets, pain, any sin, whatever you've caused and you have shame or guilt or embarrassment, you feel you're not good enough to be used by God, let this be a testimony to you that God can use, if God can use a Moabite woman, an enemy of his people, enemy of God himself, to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, what's too hard for him? He would love to use you. So don't count yourself out and don't count others out because of their past, because of their regrets, because of their sins. Don't count them out. God could turn their life around and use them to do miracles in this earth. So just know that God loves you, that he wants to use you. He wants to redeem you. He wants to restore you. He wants to reclaim all that was lost, all that was stolen, all that was destroyed, your purpose, your passion, your destiny, your identity, your value, your purity. He wants to reclaim those things for you. He wants to redeem and restore those things. But will you let him? If you're in a relationship that's toxic, and I always bring this up because a lot of times we're in relationships that's killing us spiritually, that's killing us from the very inner core of our soul, that's destroying our purpose, our identity, our purity, our wholeness, our purpose in God, but we're holding on to them. Let God redeem you. Let him restore you. You don't need a Boaz right now. You need a Jesus Christ to restore you, to be your kinsman redeemer. He's here for you. And believe me, as we read in the story, when you choose God first and you show faithfulness that you're going to be loyal to him, he's going to bring your Boaz. Ruth showed that she loved God. She showed that she had a dogmatic stand to stand for truth, to stand before the Lord, no matter what came, no matter what went, no matter if there was famine in the land, no matter if God killed her husband off or he didn't kill him off, no matter if God allowed it because he didn't kill him, but he allowed it, no matter if she was going to have to live in poverty, she said, I trust you, God. I'm going to stick with my mother-in-law, Naomi. If that's her God, you're my God. I'm not going back to my God. I'm not going back to my old sin. I'm not going back to my old shame. I'm not going back to try to lead my own life, to try to figure it out on my own, as we do. She said, I'm standing here, and I'm going to see the salvation of God. And you are going to bring me into a wealthy place. You're going to bring me into redemption. You're going to bring my Boaz. And it's up to you to trust God. You're going to restore my life. You're going to redeem everything that the enemy thought he destroyed. You're going to bring back my wholeness and my purity, my self-worth. You're going to bring back wholeness into my life. I'm going to be whole and complete in you and you alone, God. And because I stand in you, because I'm faithful in you, and I want you and not your hand, you are going to bring my Boaz in due time. So again, I hope this has encouraged you. Woman of God, know who you are. Woman of God, stand in truth. Woman of God, stand on God's word, on his faithfulness. He loves you. He is your kinsman redeemer. He is your husband. He is your lover. He is your strength. And in due time, he's going to bring that Boaz. I love you, ladies. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope you really heard what I said. I hope you ask God to open up your understanding to how great it is to be the bride of Christ and to have him as our husband. How great it is to have Jesus Christ as our kinsman redeemer to redeem everything that was lost and everything that was destroyed. So again... Please like if this video encouraged you. Please subscribe below and also comment and share, guys. Lord, let's just end in, in a prayer. God, just touch us all, God. Heal us, God. Deliver us, Lord. Set us free, oh God. Heal the brokenness, God. Help us to separate ourselves from everything that's not of you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Every listener, Lord God, today, redeem her, God, her life from past regrets, hurts, pains, destruction, self-identity, and worth that was lost, purity, oh God. Give her purpose and passion for you. Give her a heart for you, God, a hunger and thirst after you, oh God. Bless her life, favor her. Oh God, cover her, Lord, with your mighty hand. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. So again, I hope this has blessed you. Tune in next month for our continuing of the Bride of Christ series. Bye. See you soon.